Hey there, John Morris here, and in this video we're going to talk about how to read the PHP manual. Uh, as you go through your uh, PHP development career, you will inevitably, inevitably find at some point, if you haven't already, someone telling you when you ask a question to read the PHP manual. Now, if you're like me, when I was first learning PHP and someone told me that, I always used to think, oh great, you know, that's that's awesome, except I have no clue how to read it. So one thing I wanted to do is kind of come through and show you uh, how to read the PHP manual and, and kind of help make sense of this because I know for me, once I, I, I kind of figured out how to read this, it really was a breakthrough for me because uh, I knew that I could come in here at any time and look for a particular function. And once I found the function I needed, I, I would actually know how to use it uh, and be able to make what I needed to make happen actually happen in my uh, code so um, hopefully through this video you'll get that same kind of breakthrough so let's go ahead and dive right in and talk about how to read the PHP manual so uh, inevitably at some point you're going to be online and you will be doing research for a particular function or you you'll need um, you'll have a something that you know you you want PHP to do with your data you may not know the specific function, and you're going to be looking for it, and you're going to be able to, uh, you're going to want to use it. So, typically, what I do is I will come to Google, and I'll do a search like we have here: make a string lowercase. Okay, and almost all the time, if you put PHP at the end with kind of the functionality that you want to happen, you're going to get some sort of list of, uh, you're going to get some sort of function or uh, a list of functions you're gonna get something that's gonna give you a clue as to how uh, or what function you need to use in order to accomplish that particular task or that functionality with your data so in this case we type in make a string lowercase and of course we get the PHP string to lower and if we click through to that then you'll see that we have the description that says make a string lowercase okay so a little bit about how to read this page. Of course, first at the top, you're going to have the name of the function. That's that's pretty obvious. Then you're going to have the um, which PHP versions it's it works in, it's valid in. So PHP 4 and PHP 5, and that's something to pay attention to um, as you know different functions get deprecated and, and things like that. So then you're going to have a little bit of a description. It says what it does, and that'll kind of help you to decide if this function is going to do what you need it to do. And then you're going to go into a description that has a little more detail. All right? And the thing that can really confuse people, I know really confuse me, is this line right here. Because it has some extra things in there that if you don't know exactly what they are, then you might not be able to make sense of them. So, of course, we see the name of the function here. And we kind of see your typical syntax with the parentheses for a function. But inside of it, we have our variable. And then we have this little string right here. Okay, when you actually use the function, you won't be putting the string in here. You'll just be putting in your variable or just putting in your 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 string directly into it, however you're going to do it. But what this is telling you is that this function accepts a string as its parameter or as this particular parameter. And if you remember from us talking about data types, you know that there's a number of different data types like arrays, strings, integers, booleans, and so on. So this is important so that you know what kind of data type it accepts. You wouldn't be able to put an array into this function. You wouldn't be able to put a boolean into this function. Okay, so that's important to know. Uh, and it's going to be each parameter can can accept something. Uh, different or could accept something different. We'll talk about that here in just a minute with another function. But uh, so that's important to know that this only accepts or this parameter only accepts a string. So you'll have to format it as a string when you uh, pass it into this function. Then there's this um, this part right here, which again, if you don't know what it is, can be a little confusing. And what this is telling you is what. Uh, what kind of what data type this function returns and so if you see down here it says it returns a string with all the alphabetic characters converted to lowercase okay so it's telling you that it's going to return a string so it accepts it as a string and the data type is going to get back to you as a string so that's going to be important for when you go to actually use this data for example if this were for some reason returning an array 
you wouldn't just be able to echo that array because that's not how arrays work, right? So it's important to know what uh, data type you're going to get back so you know how to work with it. Being that it's a string, you could just straight echo it, okay? So now you're going to have a little more of a description down here like we covered. And then uh, down here, it's going to cover each parameter individually and tell you exactly what that parameter is. So this refers to this parameter up here and it tells you that it's the input string so it's the text that you want to make lowercase and then of course down here it's going to tell you uh, the return values and it says it returns the lowercase string and then below that it's going to have an example and so you see in this example they set a variable to Mary had a little lamb and she loved it so and then this is passing that variable into the string to lower function and saving the result as uh, this variable and then now we're echoing out this variable and it will print this all in lowercase. If we come over to some code I've written here you notice that we do the exact same thing here we set uh, this variable as a string and then we pass that string into the function and save the result as a variable and then we echo that variable and if we come back over and we look at our demo page you'll notice that we have that string as lowercase okay so um, that's a simple example of going to the PHP manual and using it to find a function and know what that function does and create the functionality we need uh, with that okay now you will inevitably have cases where you come across more complex functions okay for example we have this array key exists function and what this does is it checks to see if a given key or index exists in an array and then we can come down here and it says returns true if the given key is set in the array and false if it's not and so again we can look at our description here we have our function name and then you're gonna see we have this key and this is uh, corresponds to this parameter down here and you see it says mixed now from experience having used it I know what that means um, because I know that you have two types of, of uh, arrays two main types of arrays which is a indexed array and associative array and associative array is gonna have key names and then values whereas an indexed array is gonna have uh, just an index which is zero through whatever however many um, items there are in that array and then it's gonna have the value so what this mix mean is is that you could pass in an integer for an indexed array or you could pass in a string for uh, the key uh, name in an associative array and we'll cover that in just a second so um, again that's something that you'll need to look at and, and see that and then of course down here it's going to tell you that this is the value to check so this is what we're checking for and then this uh, parameter is the actual array itself that we want to check so uh, which array are we going to check to see if this key exists within okay so that's the parameters then you'll see over here what it returns is a boolean so uh, again boolean is true false so it's going to return either true or false okay so that means we could put it directly into an uh, in into a conditional statement okay and then of course we have uh, some examples down here of how it works and uh, a description of the return values as well so let's head over to our code and you'll see that I've created a simple array and it's an associative array now an indexed array um, would just be numbers. This would be 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so uh, that's the difference between an associative array and an indexed array. Instead of having these names, um, it just would have numbers for each item. Okay, and it would just count them down until it, all the items were counted. So we've created the array and let's check for uh, a key named name. Okay, and we know it exists because it's right here. So uh, we should get um, key exists because if this is true, then we want to echo key exists. Otherwise, we're going to echo key does not exist. And you notice we can put this directly into this conditional statement because it returns uh, a boolean. 
Okay, so if we come back over and we come to our site here and we refresh it, you notice it says key exists. Then if we come back to our code and let's say let's change this to dog. And now it you notice that doesn't exist in here, so we should get key does not exist. Refresh and we get key doesn't exist. Okay, so that's an example of using this function and again it's all just a matter of coming to the manual and being able to read and see how it works. And so pretty much every function that you, you, you see in here is going to work in a similar array or a similar way. So you see that this returns an array. This accepts array as an input, accepts an integer named case, um, and it's going to be either uppercase or lowercase. Um, this one, it returns an array. It accepts a parameter input, which is an array. Um, accepts uh, a parameter size which is an integer uh, and then it accepts a parameter called preserve keys and that's a boolean true or false okay and, and you can just go on down through all of these different functions and you'll have a similar output or a similar uh, layout there so um, once you kinda get the hang of this then then being able to come in and uh, find the functions that you need is really going to be a lot easier and it's really going to allow you to be a lot more creative because you can kind of start to abstract a little bit and think about certain functionality you 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 want and what you'll have to do to the data in order to make it happen and then you can start to search for to see if the functions that you need in each step of your data manipulation those exist and if they do then how to use them and, and make your script come together by sending your data through the various steps uh, using the different functions in PHP. So uh, that's really what writing code, <laughs> so that's pretty much all it is, is taking data and you know passing it through a number of functions to do different things to get a certain set of functionality. So um, uh, this knowing how to read the PHP manual is is very important in that because you know, it's not really uh, feasible to remember or memorize the entire manual. So being able to come in here and look stuff up and know how to use it just by reading this this short little uh, part here is very, very important. So um, that's how to read the PHP manual. Hopefully that's helpful for you. And I'll talk to you again soon.